Hello everyone. I'm going to give you offer related to CCI lab. In this lab, what you will find, so let me quickly show you that. In this lab, you have multiples switches. You can see you have more than 16 switches, 20 routers. You have a Steven full-fledged lab. Actually, this is complete uh, CCI Enterprise 1.0 lab where you can do section 1, section 2, section 3. Maybe you know that in CC exam you have three different sections. It's already sections are defined but generally these three sections that students are practicing and in this three sections you can perform everything. All the tasks you can perform in this particular Eve NG lab. You can see the version and the supported images this is exact match that we have in the exam as well. So for example, for SD-WAN, you need to work on VAGES and the uh, vManage. Release is 18.4. That's the same release we have in the exam as well. So this will be your very much uh, similar lab setup that you have in your CCI exam for your practice purpose. Now, what you can't do in this lab, you can't do lab related to DNA because in this EVNG lab, we don't have Cisco DNAC integration and you can't do uh, ICE lab as well because in this we don't have ICE integration as well. For that practice, you need full-fledged online rake from any good place you can go and have it. But apart from that, apart from 2.0, 1.2.2 .2, actually you can go and perform all the tasks even if you are not practicing for your CCI exam for example you are practicing for your CCNP and you want to check your OSPF knowledge, BGP knowledge, MPLS knowledge, uh, SD-WAN knowledge all those tasks you can go and perform in this lab with this lab I'm providing the video guide how to do all those tasks. Even we have the lab guide as well. So you can simply follow those guide. You can simply go and complete all those tasks. Suppose if you are new to the technology, so I have multiple free videos in YouTube and Udemy that you can go and refer to upskill your knowledge to learn the technology. And then simply you can go and use this particular lab and you can break any CCNP CCI exam means you, you will pass it um, uh, easily. Now what is the cost? And these are the sections that we have in the CCI exam. So what is the cost of this? Because I'm offering this for the student so I put very little a small cost here. So you have to pay only 150 USD to get this particular software and uh, how you can go and get it you have to email me so my email address you can send me one email request let me write here ratnesh721 kumar721 at the rate gmail.com just email me and uh, send me the request and I will give you this particular nice software, full-fledged software, EVNG software or the file where you can go and practice your CCNA, CCNP, CCI, SD1, full-fledged SD1 is there. So if you can go and watch my YouTube videos, in YouTube I have 22 hours SD1 uh, video recording file and so many SD1 videos I have uploaded in YouTube those YouTube videos also you need some lab setup, right, to practice. So even if you're not preparing for your CCNP or CCI, simply you want to learn uh, Cisco SD-WAN, you can go watch my free videos in YouTube, use this particular lab setup and you can perform your SD-WAN. You can become master in the SD-WAN. Likewise, if you're preparing for CCNP, in CCNP, again, we know that we have N core and one elective. For that also, you can go and perform all the tasks related to routing and switching, OSP, BGP, everything in this lab. It's a full-fledged lab. So I will recommend you to send this email right away. Take this particular lab, practice, enhance your skill, and become very good in the market so you will get high paid salaries.
I like. After that, you go and watch the technology video. Thanks for watching. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining, subscribing this course. This is Azure 700. That's the paper code or exam code. This is designing and implementing Microsoft Azure networking solution. Now, as for network engineers, we know networking, how routers, which is firewall, uh, they are working. We are doing the configuration via CLI or GUI. And we know all those networking concept. What new for us is that how this networking concepts, they will fit inside the cloud. So maybe if you're studying for Azure or GCP or AWS cloud, is the same type of uh, configuration or same type of uh, uh, concept we have in the cloud networking as well? The answer is yes and no. Yes, in, in terms of that, that routing protocol such as BGP, OSPF, et cetera, they will not change the nature because they are defined as per RFC. The thing is this, the change part is this, that here you have to do everything in the GUI, right? And you have to understand their term, like what is virtual network, what is peering, what is global, local, ability zones, and all those terms. But behind the scene networking concepts, actually, obviously they are same and because this is cloud and services so that means you will bombard it with all different type of uh, cloud networking solutions so for firewalling advanced firewalling uh, context uh, context to firewall l4 to l7 services you know all those concept each and everything you will get and you have to go and click 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 and this these services will get deployed that's the only thing you know, means the cloud provider, they try to make this actually very easy for everyone. But behind the scene, we should know the concept to go and run these services either on-prem or cloud, right? What are the topics? You can see the topics clearly here that design and implementing network infra, managing the connectivity, application delivery services, private access Azure services and connectivity to Azure resources. Obviously, once you will start this course, slowly, 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 you will understand all these terminologies used here, right? Now, suppose if once you complete the course, then you can go for practice sessions, you can go for um, some practice sessions purchased from publicly here and there. It means once you um, enroll for your exam, exam fees is, less than $150. So once you go and book, uh, write your exam, you'll get certificate like this. So I recently cleared this uh, exam. Actually in this uh, time frame, I have uh, I have done this uh, network associated related to cloud and you can see this validity is only one year. Unlike Cisco certifications, they are for three years or uh, sometimes two years as well. A few certificates, but generally a standard is three year, three, three years validity. Here it is validated only for one year. All right, so just continue this course. Slowly, slowly will understand all these concepts and later on you can go for certification. I hope this course will be very informative for you. You will learn cloud related networking in this course and you can utilize these knowledge in your job as well. All right, now you're very much excited to do this course, but from where you can go and start this, right? So you can go to the Microsoft website, first of all, and you can go and search AG700. You will get this particular page where this is actually exam related page, but in this page itself, if you go and scroll down, you will see that uh, how you can go and book the exam. So if you are in different, different countries, you can go and check the price, different countries, their price is a little bit different. Now, from here, you can go and click and you can uh, book your slot, exam slot, either online or the exam testing centers. They have centers everywhere. Online center is like, you can go and book exam to the Pearson. And this is the skill they want to measure in this. But what about my knowledge, my practice and my uh, lab uh, simulation practices and all? 
so for that you can see this you can go and use this learning path i will click and i will show you that but they have given some related uh, topics uh, as well that you can go and check the training and preparation guide exam replay your certification blah blah all those things are there right basically important thing we have is this particular link that uh, we can go and do the lab practice and we can go and check the technology and this one once you are ready you can go and book your exam right so once you click here go inside this now you can see that learning path will get started and you will get some numbers as well this is xp some experience token etc just the way that uh, microsoft is giving you some tokens and all so once you complete this it will become green so introduction to virtual network designing hybrid network and all those uh, topics we have and the timeline as well so once you click go inside this you will see all these topics their definitions and all that i will cover in this section introduction explore so if i go and click explore the azure virtual network this will come what cool thing about this is this that once they will go and explain each and everything uh, if you have normal networking knowledge as well basic norm uh, normal networking knowledge as well you can go and understand each and everything while reading this and then what they are doing here is this that they are providing this simulated lab as well that i like most so i'm going to use this particular simulated lab so you can see the architecture diagram here and if i scroll down 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 you can see this simulated lab if you click this simulated lab this lab will start right now it is loading and you see that how cool is this that once you go and start this particular lab simulated lab right and then it will tell you that uh, do this do this do this do this task do this task and if you do this simulated lab as well you will understand most of the thing although azure is providing sandboxes free sandboxes to do the practices they are providing 200 dollar credit to do the practices and all but this simulated lab is one of the nice guided lab we have right so i have shown you that from where you can go and get the documents the training materials right and how you can perform the lab just follow these lab just follow my video and these labs and you will be very much certified within 10 to 15 days in this particular technology all right so let's start our training journey all right so we are not going to understand each and every theoretical piece and then i will go and try to learn the azure networking what i'm going to do here is this that i will give you a small piece of theoretical knowledge and then directly we'll go and do the hands-on and then we'll try to understand the main goal here is this that since we belong to physical network we work on routers, switches, mostly we are Cisco engineers or Juniper engineers. So we are very much familiar with the router, switches, interfaces, ports, VLAN, routing protocol, and all those fundamentals, right? All of a sudden, we have to go and do all these things in a cloud. And now if you go and start learning this, you'll find that you have to learn the tenant what is the meaning of tenant resource group subscriptions then virtual network within virtual network so many things like subnets then how these subnets will communicate how the cloud infra will go and communicate to the on-prem and all those things and it's like very much mixed so do not go in that way that route just learn a little bit of theory 30 like percent of theory or maybe 20% of theory you learn and, and then you do 70 to 80% of lab or hands-on. At the moment, you will start doing hands-on practice. You will see that you will be very good, comfortable in this cloud networking. And then any, any cloud, Azure, GCP, AWS, any, because the basic building block for all these cloud services are almost same. 
Okay, so let's just start with this uh, virtual network within Azure. Now, what is meaning of virtual network? You can see clearly it's a type of container. So in uh, Cisco world, can I think this as a VRF? Or can we think this as uh, in ACI terms, can we think this as a tenant or something like that? Right, like that you can an analyze. But point here is this, that it's a type of a small container. And in this container, you have to go and do all networking stuff, all networking task. So let's see the definition, what uh, Microsoft is telling about definition, that VNets enable you to build complex virtual network. That's the key, virtual network, similar that we are building in on-prem with additional benefit of Azure infrastructure that Azure has different things like scalability, availability zone, isolation, security. So many different things are there. So at the moment you think VNet is a type of container where you will go and define different, different services, right? This type of container. Later on, obviously, you will understand in this VNet, this upper box, we'll go and define different, different subnets. And then you'll see that how things will become very, very simplified, very, very easy, right? So everything will go and make this simple. All right, so VNet, now why we need VNet? To do the communication to the internet. Obviously within VNet, you have subnets in the, inside that you'll go and install your virtual machines so they can do the communication uh, to the internet. They can, so one VNet, other VNet, you have resources within the VNet, they can do the communication across that. It's not only thing. Later on again, when we'll go and do more and more labs and hands-on, you'll see that you are running applications, you have some storage, then how everything will, will glued, everything will connect, all those informations you will get. But again, we'll go very slow, we'll understand theory and lab, theory lab like that. So what finally it will do, it's a container. It's a secure container, you can think, where the VMs can communicate to internet, they can communicate within the resources, then these VMs, so cloud hosted machines can go and communicate with the on-prem machines. Obviously you have to go and uh, enable some sort of VPN, express route, express route gateway, etc. These are the terms that, <laughs> you can see traffic. These are the terms that you will get uh, later on, when we are study more and more, then we have security features, then we can do the routing network traffic, all these aspects, you'll go and see. Now, how we are going to define the addresses, because anyways, if you are doing communication, you need some logical address, right? IPv4 or IPv6. Since this is within the container, so point here is this, that, okay, any of the company, any of the customer, they can go and use the cloud resource route, right? So when they are using the cloud resources, obviously they may go and use some private addresses at one place. Some other company, they also can go and use the same uh, same type of pri uh, private addresses at other places. Some other company can go and use same type of private addresses and other places. So point being is this, that that's why these VNets, you can see that they are they have to, you have to go first of all, define the bigger address space on top of that VNet. And then you can go and slowly, slowly slice it and divide it into the different, different subnets, right? So here you can define some big, say 10, 0, 0, 0, just an example, slash maybe 18, for example. And then here, slash 26, slash 20, for etc cetera, etc cetera. so big subnet inside that you can go and define the a smaller subnet like that you can do it so the subnets may be ipv4 maybe ipv6 some other specifications are there some multicast addresses are there and then you have the subnets for subnets also you should have some uh, subnet in a range in a address space that from that subnet at least you can assign some host right uh, so that's the idea for the subnet. So within VNet, we'll go and define the subnet. And finally, this is actually for corporate uh, customers. The point here is this, that 
whenever you are doing a naming convention and you, later on you will see in the lab in the in the next session we have lab so you should give give some meaningful name why because later on you will understand that this belongs to east region or west region what's the instance this is instance one two three four is this uh, what type of environment is this is the prod non-prod and dev etc what type of workload or application you have it's a web app db and is this the public or private address like that okay we know that uh, from the fundamentals of Azure or fundamentals of cloud that they have different type of ability zones. They have different type of June redundancy, either local June redundancy or global June redundancy. So if you have VMs at one place and you have certain replications on other places, it will be highly available. But all these things will go and discuss. We'll go and learn all these things slowly, slowly. All right, let's just stop here. Let us perform the lab. So I told you that how we can go and uh, search these URLs earlier. You can go and perform the lab task. This is very much that step by step. You can go and uh, slowly, slowly you can perform and uh, try to get uh, out of 100% from these labs. They are very much well documented step by step lab. All right. So what we want to do here, we want to do that. Uh, we want to create VNet, right? And within VNet, we want to go and add the subnets. That's it. Very small task we want to do. So here you will see, let me quickly go and highlight. And let me use the highlighter. So here you can see that we can go to the South Asia. Within that, you can see that we have research VNet having slash 16. Inside that, we'll go and create a research system subnet. So within VNet, simply within VNet, what is the task? Within VNet, go and go and create the subnet. That's it. So VNet and subnet. That's what we want to create. That's it. Simple, easy, right? So likewise, you can see that uh, East US, we have gateway subnet. This is a little bit different. Then apart from that, database, shared services, a web subnet, they are 1020, 10.0, 20.0, 30.0. And then you have the big pool. You can see that we have the uh, VNet having slash 16. And then we have slices, right? Very much in our networking, we used to do when we are creating some sort of uh, DHCP servers, right? And inside DHCP server, you are defining the network, you are defining the default gateways, and from that network and gateway, they are getting the IP. So whatever PCs, they will do some DORA, they will get the IP, right? But again, we'll not go to that complexity here. Simply create the VNet. Within the VNet, go and create good amount of subnets. Now, in West Europe, you have man uh, manufacturing subnet. So you can see this 1030 and 1030. So 1030, 1030, 20, 21, 22, like that we have. How we can go and create within the portal, very easy. Let me quickly show you this. And we have one resource group, Contoso, where we'll go and create this virtual net and the subnets within this interactive lab session. The so task one that you have to go and create the resource group you can see on top you have different type of services we can go and create virtual machines app service storage all sort of things we can do and suppose if you don't know that on top you have this search bar in this search section you can simply go to this search section whatever you want to search search it and it will pop up and then slowly slowly you can go and create all these services so let's go first of all create the resource group you can see this plus button here click this plus button go and give the name for the resource group as per our initial agenda right as per our initial strategy so what we are doing here we are creating the strategy first and then we are doing the configuration second click review and create and then you can go and click create. So resource group is done. When you create, it will take some 10 to 15 seconds to uh, done it. So once you have 
created the resource group. Now we have to go and create the VNet and the subnets. So now you can see on the top, we have this search. Click to the search, virtual network. You'll get this virtual network. Click to that virtual network. This is the container we are creating, right? So within this container, first of all, we are giving the resource group that we have created and then the name of the VNet. So this is core service VNet. Let's go to next, that's the IP address. Some default IPs will be there. We can go and delete it because we have our own 1020, 1030, 1040, right? So we can go and do like this. Now, once we are giving the IP to the bigger subnet, right? So I told you earlier that you have to go and give the IP to this bigger subnet on top here. And then you can go and create small small subnet so bigger network not subnet so vnet so you are giving ip for the vnet and then these subnets that you are creating these subnets you can go and give the ips very simple simply giving the ip from the gui not a big de uh, deal so add the subnet now we'll go and give the gateway subnet and then the add is the 27 now we'll go and add more subnets here shared service 10, 10, 20, and these things as a network engineer, we are masters in these things. Database, 10, and then we'll go and add one more as per the initial diagram, public web service subnet, 10, 20, add. So now we have created a VNet and four subnets. Then we'll go and create the other VNet, subnet, other VNet, subnet, and lab is very much done. Right, so in deployment, it will take some time. Once it will get deployed, then go to task number three. Again, search on top, virtual network, create the virtual network, associate with the resource group that we have, give the name of that particular VNet, give the region that you want to create this VNet because in the diagram, you can see we have different regions remove this default address space, give the correct address space and go and add all the related subnets, the name and the subnet mask, subnet one, subnet two, like that. So this is sensor subnet, give the IP for the sensor subnet, add subnet number three. See, repetition, what we are doing? No much brainer. All easy stuff we are doing. Do that and then review and create. And again, it will take some time to do the deployment, maybe 10 to 15 seconds. Once it is done, then we'll go to task number four. Now we have to go and create the task four. That is the last subnet and then the group. So here also we'll see that I will go to resource group, click here. I will select this when then we'll go and give some logical name here. And this time this is belonging to other reason. We'll go and give that reason. Delete this default group, give the correct name here, add the subnet, give the subnet name, research subnet. And then we'll go and click review, create. And we are very much done. So we have completed the task here. You can see how easy to create the subnet and then how easy, uh, how easy to create the VNet and within that VNet, how easy it is to go and create the subnets, right? Let's just stop here. In the previous section, we have created the subnet. Let's quickly go and verify these Subnets, obviously we'll go to the VNets and then we'll verify the subnet. So let's go to the menu. And in menu, you can see that we have all resources tab. If you go and click all resources, you can see that our newly created VNets are here. So core service VNet, manufacturing VNet, research VNet in the bottom. Let's go and click here. So once we are inside the core service VNet, you can see that within that VNet, what is the address space? You can see this virtual network ID, some sort of ID will be tagged here. Then how the machine will know that this uh, unique ID belongs to this VNet. This is little bit uh, programming terms we have. 
All right. So now here you can see that within this core service VNet, where we have the address space, we can go and click to this subnets. And now you can see that we have created these four subnet, right? So gateway, shared data, and this public web. Likewise, let's quickly go to other VNets and verify it. Now we are inside the manufacturing VNet and here also we can go and verify all those subnets that we have created, 10, 30, 20, 21, 22, and 10, right? Likewise, finally, we can go to the research VNet and there also we can go and click to the subnet and then there is only one subnet, right? So this is the way that uh, the subnet that we have created within the VNet, we can go and verify it. All right, let's uh, stop here. Hello, everyone. I'm going to give you offer related to CCI lab. In this lab, what you will find, so let me quickly show you that. In this lab, you have multiples switches. You can see you have more than 16 switches, 20 routers. You have a Steven full-fledged lab. Actually, this is complete uh, CCI enterprise 1.0 lab where you can do section one, section two, section three. Maybe you know that in CCI exam, you have three different sections. Means already sections are defined, but generally these three sections that students are practicing. And in this three sections, you can perform everything, all the tasks you can perform in this particular Eve NG lab. You can see the version and the supported images. This is exact match that we have in the exam as well. So for example, for sd -WAN, you need to work on VAGs and the uh, vManage release is 18.4. That's the same release we have in the exam as well. So this will be your very much uh, similar lab setup that you have in your CCI exam for your practice purpose. Now, what you can't do in this lab you can't do lab related to DNA because in this Eve NG lab, we don't have Cisco DNAC integration and you can't do uh, ICE lab as well because in this, we don't have ICE integration as well. For that practice, you need full-fledged online rake from any good place you can go and have it. But apart from that, apart from 2.0, 1, 2.2, 2, actually, you can go and perform all the tasks. Even if you are not practicing for your CCI exam, for example, you are practicing for your CCNP and you want to check your OSPF knowledge, BGP knowledge, MPLS knowledge, uh, SD-WAN knowledge, all those tasks you can go and perform in this lab. With this lab, I'm providing the video guide how to do all those tasks. Even we have the lab guide as well. So you can simply follow those guide. You can simply go and complete all those tasks. Suppose if you are new to the technology, so I have multiple free videos in YouTube and Udemy that you can go and refer to upskill your knowledge to learn the technology. And then simply you can go and use this particular lab and you can break any CCNP CCI exam means you, you will pass it uh, easily. Now, what is the cost? And these are the sections that we have in the CCI exam. So what is the cost of this? Because I'm offering this for the students, so I put very little small cost here. So you have to pay only 150 USD to get this particular software and uh, how you can go and get it, you have to email me. So my email address, you can send me one email request. Let me write here, Ratnesh721, Kumar721 at the rate gmail.com. Just email me and uh, send me the request and I will give you this particular nice software, full-fledged software, EVNG software or the file where you can go and practice your CCNA, CCNP, CCI, SD1, full-fledged SD1 is there. So if you can go and watch my YouTube videos, in YouTube I have 22 hours 
SD-WAN uh, video recording file and so many SD-WAN videos I have uploaded in YouTube. Those YouTube videos also you need some lab setup, right, to practice. So even if you are not preparing for your CCNP or CCI, simply you want to learn uh, Cisco SD-WAN, you can go watch my free videos in YouTube, use this particular lab setup and you can perform your SD-WAN. You can become master in the SD-WAN. Likewise, if you are preparing for CCNP, in CCNP, again, we know that we have N-Core and one elective. For that also, you can go and perform all the tasks related to routing and switching, OSP, BGP, everything in this lab. It's a full-fledged lab. So I will recommend you to send this email right away. Take this particular lab, practice, enhance your skill, and become very good in the market so you will get high paid salaries. All right. After that, you go and watch the technology video. Thanks for watching. In this video, I will go and discuss about a DNS used inside Azure. And we are very much specific to our Azure 700, where we are studying Azure facility or Azure networking related to network engineers that we are and then we try to understand that within the cloud how this networking is happening. So, so far we have a study about a basics of uh, VNet subnets and we have performed the lab as well. In this section, let's try to understand this DNS. Now, DNS is a broader and it's a big topic and DNS can be managed from system admins or maybe network uh, administrators or uh, maybe those pool of engineers, they are managing the uh, overall Active Directory, DNS, and system-related things, right? Now, for the perspective of network engineer, how much knowledge is require, required that we are going to discuss in this. First of all, we'll go and understand very basic of DNS. DNS, what it is doing? DNS is simply the resolution in between IP to name, name to IP, right? So as a network engineer, we can provide the path connectivity so source can reach to destination and source and destination may be in private, may be public, may be mixed of private and public uh, zones they, they can sit, right? Now think that suppose if you have to go to google.com, so what you're doing? You're simply going your, to your web browser, you're typing www.google.com and you're reaching there. Right, But behind the scene, because everything is provided via some routed or routing network, that means that particular URL is glued with some IP and then uh, source can reach to the destination. That's the basic that we have in a networking world. Is it possible for us to memorize all the IP addresses, all the destinations, IP address like 223, 449, 123, 111, etc.? It's very difficult, right? And again, the very important thing here is this to understand. Now, let me try to highlight that what Azure is doing, that it's not only the domain name a resolution but behind the scenes some technology is here and they are using any cast networking technology that that is used in all the networking as well like microsoft or google everywhere any cast uh, technology means closest to the destination so suppose if to reach somewhere you have three closest exit and from all these closest exit, you can reach to the destination. In that case, this anycast methodology is coming into the picture. We have unicast, we have multicast, we have anycast, right? So we know that um, source to group, something like that. So this is one of the key thing that uh, Azure is using anycast type of networking concept. The other very important thing is this, obviously the fundamental of TNS, like this is IP to name a resolution. The other very important thing, and that should be part one within the DNS, that they are supporting hierarchical system. That means somewhere you have the root and then you have the uh, sub root, you can say, or the root and then the branches and sub branches and all like that. You can think it's like it's like globally you have some parent and then you have child, child, child in the in the bottom like that. The hierarchy is supported.
IPv4, we have A record. IPv6, we have uh, four times A record. We have alias record as well. Again, the DNS concept and theory itself is big, but overall, we are trying to understanding here the important aspects related to network engineers. So when you start this particular article that is published in Microsoft uh, website, you'll find that you first understand DNS, components of DNS, and then try to understand the public DNS services and private DNS services. So public means that is very nearby to the internet and private, private means that that is within the Azure domain, that is within the Azure region, right? So what are the considerations we have related to public DNS? You can see that considerations related to this. And then what are the considerations we have related to private DNS? So you can go and check this private DNS consideration or methods. This is Azure DNS private zone, Azure provided name resolution, name resolution that uses your own DNS server. So the question may arise here, all right, suppose I am on-prem, I have on-prem data center, and then can I delegate my services to Azure DNS? The answer is yes, that we can go and delegate that service. So let me quickly go and scroll down here, bottom. You will see in the bottom that you have your on-prem DNS and then you can use this conditional forwarding that is going to uh, that query is going to DNA um, the Azure VNet one and from there it is resolving the DNS query. So that means that we can use this conditional forwarding as well and then we will see that the on-prem can go and re redirect the uh, DNS queries to the Azure as well. It's up to us that how we are redirecting the queries. So in the upcoming lab, what we'll do, we'll go and perform a task related to private DNS zone. And you'll see that what we will do, that will go and link our different type of VNets. So we have to go and link our VNet links to this private zone and then we'll go and check from the VM itself that VM is itself able to resolve those DNS entries or not. It should resolve, right? So we'll go and check the NS lookup and we'll see the resolution. So overall, as a network perspective, linking your uh, linking your VNet to the private zone or linking your network to the public zone. Actually, it is easy. Most of the things related to public zone, it is by default. But if you want to do some customization, you should go and use some manual method to do the customization. All right. So I hope you understood uh, that DNS, their use and private and public uh, DNS theory. And in the next section, when you watch that lab, you will fully understand that how we can go and link our private DNS with the VNet link. And then how the VMs can go and resolve the query. All right, so let's uh, stop here. All right, so let's perform the lab task. In this lab, we'll go and perform the task in that we have to go and create the private DNS, link the VNets to the private DNS zone, creating virtual workloads, VMs, and then do the verification. Now let's go and search DNS record. You can see that we have this private DNS zone that we want to create. Creation is also very easy. Just go and map with the resource group that we already have. Uh, Contosho resource group, that's the name earlier we have used this. Then the name of this instance is Contosho.com. We can go click review and create. Now once it is created, then the next task we have is to link the VNets with this private DNS zone. So the uh, the next task that now we want to perform is that link the VNets to this private zone. Once you are here in the contoso.com, you can see that in the overview section, in the setting section, we have virtual network links. 
and then we can go and add it. So we have different type of VNets. One of them is control core service VNet. That's the name that we are giving. So different, different VNets with different, different zones that we have will go create it. And it's very important. And you can refer the uh, training link in that document, Microsoft document, that why we are enabling this enable auto registration. It will take care of most of the things related to the linking within the VNet and the uh, private DNS. Now, other is manufacturing VNet. I'm putting here a link as well. And then this is West enable. Okay. Once we have these two VNet links, then we'll go and add one more. This time we'll go and add for the research VNet. Let's go and add with the Asia. So different, different regions, you can see that we are adding. Once you go click update, it will get completed. You can see the link status is completed, completed, completed. Our linking has been done. Now we'll go and create the VM workload. Now this multiple ways, you can go and create this via the GUI or you can go and check the Microsoft link. So in Microsoft link, um, they have put all the exercise files. This is over the GitHub. What you can do, even you can go and clone that GitHub to your local systems, and then you can upload the deployization file. So there are two files, and one is the parameters file. You can go upload here, and then with help of Cloud Shell, we can go and install the vms like it's very much like automation now what you want to do in this way because programming is something that you have to learn once and it will be useful all the time and likewise i have multiple courses related to automation and programming over the udemy even so many courses are there in youtube as well that is freely available you can go and have a look on that you will understand the basics that how we are taking the input file means uh, input file whenever we are taking why we are using XML or JSON format to take those as an input and then you can you know integrate with any programming language and it will give you the results. So now let's go and set the account with the CLI AG is the starting account set we are in the PowerShell here and then we can go and set the variable as well. So the RG name is Contoso group and then we can go and do the deployment. So you can see that template file is azure.json. And then we have the template parameter that is azure parameter.json. Once you do this, then automatically it will go and create the VMs for us. So you can see that we have a VM test VM1 with test VM1 NIC, test VM2 test VM NIC2 and the rest of the para if you go and check the parameters file and the deployment file you will see most of the things we are using as a default default variables now let's go and verify that the VMs we have created is already existing there and now you can see that we have VM1 VM2 they are part of subscription as your subscription one they're part of resource group contour resource group location US East East they are running and their size you can see DS2 V2 they have the public IP as well, right? So this VM creation is done. Now what we need to do that we have to go and verify the DNS mapping. So let's go to the Contoso group here. And then you can see this test VM. Let's do the RDP. Once we'll do the RDP. Then we'll log into the VM. So let me give the username and password. Again, these are the simulations. But very much you can um, you can have your Azure free account. Just follow these steps and uh, take that uh, uh, GitHub repository in your local system and perform all the tasks that is listed here as a simulation. You can do it. Right, so we are ch uh, checking IP config here in this list. You can see the DNS suffix. Again, if you follow the document that I have shown you in the previous video, so Azure will go and map their internal pri private uh, domain name as internalcloudapp.net, right? 
Now, from one of the uh, DNA entry, you are pinging to the other VM. So VM to VM, we are pinging. And now we can go and take the check the NS lookup. And you can see that uh, this name. So what we are pinging? We are pinging some URL, right? That's the whole goal of the VM. So we are pinging the URL. And is this URL? Anyways, ping is failing because of uh, rule is not there related to ping but you can see that it is getting resolved so this url is getting resolved to this particular address and that means we are good right so this way we have completed this particular section let's stop here this is one of the very important topic for network engineers that how we can go and connect different vnets. So vnets are containers in that you are having different type of workloads. So you can think like this, that how you can go and connect two different uh, networking domain. In Cisco world, in normal networking world, we have routers and switches, means router, we are defining the gateways and they are, uh, they are doing the connectivity, either we are running some uh, routing protocol or creating VPNs, et cetera. What in case of uh, Azure networking? Now clearly you see that we can have peering in between same region, that's the Azure region, that is VNet peering, or those VNets may be existing globally. So we have, you can think like this, we have local peering, we have global peering. Now here they have given the name regional peering and then the global peering. So if one region VNet once you communicate with the other region VNet, you have to go and create the global peering, right? And within the region, if you have peering, that is regional VNet peering. Okay, so how we can go and perform this task and what are the other uh, technology or what are the other methodologies we have to do this connectivity that we will see and later on we have the lab task for that. Now, while using this approach, you can see that it will provide you high efficiency, means low latency, high bandwidth. And one other very important thing here is this, that you can see no downtime. Apart from that, they are in the same subscription, same licensing, same tiering model. So with the same licensing and all, you can go and uh, uh, utilize this. Even creating this peering is also very easy and straightforward. We have to go and check box or uncheck some of the features and it will be done. It's very easy. Now, let's try to understand more about this concept. So here you can see that you may have a different domain here. So one of the company, fictitious company, Contoso and other is Fabricam and you can see that they are doing VNet pairing in turn that they are network. Again, you can see that uh, you may have resources resources hosted over cloud. You may have on-prem as well. So the point here is this, that on-prem to resource, resource means cloud resources to other cloud resource or other domain, and then other resource uh, data center, how all this connectivity will happen. Do we have only VNet to VNet pairing, global or local, or regional or global, or we have other methodologies as well that we can go utilize and do the connection. So answer is yes. We have other methodologies as well. Likewise, we are doing on our networking world. We are using site-to-site -site VPN. We, we can go and use point-to-site VPN means two types you have hub. That means site-to-site -site VPN. We need to win it, just we have discussed either it's, it's a regional or global. And then point to point also, point to site as well, where you have hub and other side, you are installing the agent, client agent, like Azure agent, or in Cisco, we have Cisco AnyConnect in Palo Alto, some global net, like different, different uh, vendors, they have different, different client site, a point to site type, uh, uh, type agent, where they can go and install the agents. And then the, secure tunnel, the IPsec secure tunnel will be formed, right? So all these methodologies we have, let me quickly show you one summary slide here. Finally, what will be the end goal? So end goal will be, you can see clearly here in the diagram that you want to 
uh, do the traffic uh, direction or you want to do the peering and the traffics let me quickly go and draw it so let me quickly go and take the spotlight yeah so you can see here um, you have some sort of hub and a spoke type of uh, sorry hub and spoke type of uh, connectivity where you have one think this as a one branch and other branch and then you have dc dc and branch like that we have branch one and branch two in cisco or in other network so from here you can see that you have nvs some network virtual appliance we'll, we'll check all these things later on but point here is this that yeah you can go and use this hub and a spoke type of uh, peering um, uh, methodology where you can go and use uh, hub and a spoke point to point connections right and then you can fully uh, reach the goal that you want to do the a resource reachability from one resource to other other resource to other so that reachability uh, can be reached or defined so from on-prem to cloud on-prem to cloud we can go and do the connectivity now this is not the final blueprint we have we have some other technologies as well such as express uh, express route uh, we'll check it later on but yeah overall you can understand like this type of a high level diagram we can go and draw and then we can go and understand the connectivity in between hub and spokes all right so let's just stop here in this lab section what we are going to do is that we have two different vnet vnet 1 and vnet 2 in us east and west europe here we are going to create the global virtual vnet peering so in between we are going to produce or create this vnet peering so they can do the communication to each other you can see that within the vnet we have different subnet 10 20 20 other vnet we have different subnet 10 30 10.4 these vms uh, these vm subnets so these vnet subnets we have virtual machines and these virtual machines uh, we will do the communication means uh, what we'll do we'll go and check that they have the connectivity in between them or not now to install these virtual machine i told you earlier that you can go to that uh, microsoft learning website where you can go and check for this particular block where you will get the code related to all the codes that are going to be used here in this particular lab series. So for example, we want to deploy the manufacturing VM and you can see that the parameters and the deployment JSON file within the parameter, what is the name of the VM, what is the nickname, what is the VM size and admin username, etc. So you can see that parameter file is very small and then you can see that the deploy file with powershell we are going to use this so within the deploy file you can see that all the properties and values although you can see that this particular uh, configuration let me increase the size here so these configurations are very straightforward they are in the json format where they have the key and value pair key and value key and value like that right and then what you have to do simply run this input file from your local system so what you can do that git paste you can go and clone it in your local system from where you want to run that uh, file suppose for example we want to run this file from our powershell so from there you have to uh, go and import these files and then just run it and it will work right so let's use these functions these programs to perform this particular lab task so let me quickly go and start the lab all right so we are inside the lab simulation function page and what we want to do here so we want to create the virtual machine to test the configuration we want to do the rdp and finally actually we want to create the vnet peering so we have to create the peering in between two different vnet let's do all these things one by one so let's go and create the virtual machine the same thing we can go to the powershell here 
we can upload those files you can clone it in your local system do it it's very easy put that parameter or even you can clone and create your own uh, file as well means you have to do a small small modification and then you have your own a VM related uh, function or VM related JSON for file that you can go and deploy via the PowerShell. So argument name is this. This is the variable. And then this is the command that we are using to do the deployment. So new AG resource group deployment resource group name is this variable that we are calling here. Then template file is this particular JSON file that is manufacturing VM Azure deploy. And then the parameter is manufacturing VM Azure deploy dot parameters dot JSON. Once you do that, then it will go and create the manufacturing VM, manufacturing VM make the VM size, the admin user, so it's done right now you can go and see here that we have this manufacturing vm created now we'll go and do the rdp so let's go to the test pc one let's go and connect click to the rdp and then we'll go connect give the username and the password connect so now you can see that RDP is successful. Now let's go and test the connectivity between the VMs. So we are testing 1020.20.5. This is the RDP port number. At the moment, you can clearly see it is failing. Why? Because we don't have peering rule in between two different VMs, right? So until unless you don't have the peering, they will not work. Let me fetch out the diagram here. So what this diagram is telling. You can see here that from manufacturing VM, we are doing this RDP to this test VM and it is failing. Why? Because at the moment we don't have VNet peering. Right? So we should go and create the network peering. Let's go and uh, search this uh, virtual network. Let's go to the core services. Let's go to, so you can see the peering is here within the VNet. We can go and add. Now, you know, technically behind the scene, how it is? As a network engineer, we should know this thing that what these cloud providers are doing. So suppose if you have VNet one, and if you have VNet2, and if you think for a moment that these VNets are nothing at the moment, just for our thinking purpose, these are two routers, right? And then you have resources attached with these routers. So you may have network. Network means one router link is nothing but one subnet, right? One logical subnet, and these routers are becoming the gateway. Now, suppose if you want to do the connectivity from here to here and here to here what you are doing you you correct you're correct right whatever you think is right you are creating some sort of a static routing in between them so from here to here you are creating a static routing and here to here you are also creating the static routes right the same logic fundamental you have here as well within the vnet peering so once we are creating this vnet peering Actually, we are creating some sort of a static routing in between these two VNets. So you will see here that this name, we have core to manufacturing VNet. And then you can see traffic to remote virtual network allow, traffic towards the virtual network allow, means A to B and B to A. Virtual network gateway, do you have any route server? It's none. Let's scroll down. Let's scroll down. And now peering name. You can see the reverse the name itself is also reverse. So core service VNet to manufacturing VNet and then manufacturing VNet to core service VNet. Like that we are creating. Now we are giving this manufacturing VNet. So within single page, uh, we are creating actually a static route pointing towards A to B and B to A. And now you can see that core to manufacturing VNet actually it has rule 
from manufacturing to core as well here you can see it is automatically created for us because same time we have done both either you do from one vnet or other vnet just do the vice versa right now let's go and do the verification so now again we'll go to our manufacturing vm let's go and connect it once we are here see earlier it was failed now from manufacturing we are testing to core vnet and now it is successful so very easy it's like uh, we are creating a static route in between them and our job is done so this is the routing a static routing or other way you can say that a vnet pairing in a zero term in between two different vnets all right let's just stop here in this section we are going to learn about azure networking or azure networking and routing the point here is this that okay we have created the vnet within the vnet we have the subnets and those subnets actually they are associated with virtual machines right so we have one private network within that network we have the subnets and the vms now how these vms will so within the subnets these vms will go and connect within same subnet you may have different different vms so let me quickly go and draw then we'll understand more that what exactly i'm telling so let me try to draw here suppose you have one vnet inside that vnet you have subnet and within this subnet you may have a small a small workloads or vms right so now these vms that we have how they will communicate across this own subnet suppose this is 1.0 and suppose this is 2.0 then how they can go and communicate across the subnet and then suppose if you have uh, one more vnet so let me go and draw one more vnet then how across the vnet they will go and do the communication right across the vnet how they will go and do the communication means how the routing will happen and suppose somewhere down the line if you have on prem infra so this is suppose this is on prem this is one of the data center anywhere now with this data center if we have workloads then how this workload will go and communicate with these vnets uh, because these vnets are in different different availability zone or different different regions Right. So this is the overall thing that we have to understand that how Azure is doing all these communication. And believe me, if you have a CCNA background, not even CCNP background, you will understand these topics within five minutes. It's very easy, simple. Only the terms are different, but we are using these terms when we are learning about our routing and how this routing is happening so we know from ccna knowledge from networking knowledge we know that we have some sort of a static routing and dynamic routing right so do we have in azure a static and dynamic routing how within azure these things are happening let's try to understand so at the moment you will go and create some sort of vnet so what will happen that this vnet will go and automatically create some sort of system routes now these system routes actually these are the default like azure is thinking oh no one understand networking if someone will go and create some sort of vnet some sort of subnets actually subnet is the key so within vnet if someone will go subnets then automatically they will go and create some default type of system routes, right? They will assume that within subnet, you have to do communication. They will assume that across the subnet, you have to do the communication because they are thinking that, okay, do some automation. People, they are not understanding networking or even some system admins. They know about uh, compute and a different type of workload environment and all. They don't know much about networking. Still, this will work with default route correct so azure will go and create on basis of source 
uh, add this prefix and next hop type, the default routes and how they will look like. Let me quickly show you because in this read mode, you are not able to see. So let me exit out from here and let's go to the website, Microsoft website. And here you can see that uh, the default routes. What are the default routes we have? We have default route. You can see this is very important. Unique to the virtual network. And next hop is the virtual network. Now, what is virtual network? We'll see that. So next hop. So just focus on next hop. Now router, next hop. Router wants to communicate to internet. It next hop may be default public, public default gateway, right? So 0000, that's the default route pointing towards internet. If you want to go to internet, just think in CCNA terms. If you want to point, to, if if you want that your network will not go anywhere, generally we are creating some sort of null zero, right? That we are pointing those routes towards some, some sort of bit bucket or null bucket, means it will not go anywhere. So if you have some private addresses, why you will send those private addresses and why this 10.0.0 is reserved under this RFC, this sorry, 164.0.0 is reserved. So why these private addresses and I like, let me go to the reader mode and let me extend this. So, so point here is this very simple, very straightforward. When we have the routing table, so your routing table, the default route, is pointing towards internet and all the other RFC specific routes, they are pointing towards null because why those routes you will send to anywhere, right? So you can see that you have the default that is, that is pointing towards virtual network and internet and null. Internet, we know that public address. What is this virtual network? So the route traffic between address ranges within the address space of virtual network is your create routes with address prefix that correspond to each address range defined within the address range as your automatically routes traffic between subnet. I had told you earlier, right? So in the small box that I had drawn, so within the same subnet, if you have VM, obviously the same subnet, they will work. Across the subnet also, it will work. Why? Because of this default uh, route. Because of this default system route, subnets across, uh, sub subnet within the VNet, they will do the communication. Very easy, no brainer. Very, very easy. This is something like uh, within first or second chapter in CCNA, you are learning this, right? Now, question here is this. Okay, so is that Azure is that much fool that everything it will point towards the internet? Do, do Azure don't have intelligence and all? Why they are pointing all the default routes toward internet? Where is the security? Is this that we can point out everything to internet? There should be other way that we can protect, right? So answer is yes. In that case, if we want to redirect the traffic, we'll see we have something called custom routes okay now before going to custom route we have some other optional default routes as well now why we have this other optional default routes again i need to show you this in the here so you can see that now we have some extra and default routes or optional default routes what's the use why we are using this. So now you can see that, okay, you have default route pointing towards internet. You have some default pointing towards virtual network. This is for your uh, subnet to subnet communication. This is for everything is going towards the internet communication by default. Then private addresses you're blocking, very easy peasy. Then you can see that still we have something called default, optional default routes. Why? Because this is not end of the road. I told you that one VNet can go and communicate with other VNet in the initial diagram that I had drawn, right? So that's why we have this particular optional default route. If we have that arrangement, then this will create automatically. Then there may be chance that you want to do communication with the on-prem. So if you want to do the communication with on-prem, then you need some sort of overlay protocols like BGP. 
uh, so so that reason this will get created right and in case if you have some sort of services route then this particular default will get created so now i think you are very much understanding the terms here it's so very easy how this routing is happening only thing you need to consider here is this that if you understand this diagram suppose this is vnet1 this is vnet2 and assume this is dc so what i'm telling here is this that this is let me write here this is vnet1 this is vnet2 and this is on prim dc on prim right now within vnets you have some subnets you have some subnets you have subnet you have subnet so i am telling that there are three different types of system route so one system route is there that will do the communication this is not required within the same subnet route so one system route is there that will do the communication across the subnet right one system route is there to do the communication that these workloads can go and reach out to the internet and then one system route is there that any private address they wants to go to outside this is next hop is blocked for private addresses right that rfc range address is not exactly the private address but the rfc range address same thing will happen here now these are as per the system routes you can't remove it you can't edit it this will be there this will be there then i told you that if you two different vnet will do the communication then you have to do vnet peering so for that also we have system route if these vnets will they want to do the communication suppose you have site to site vpn others then uh, you have some sort of default system route even you can go and create the express route as well we'll see that later on so for that also you have system route right uh, dynamic protocol supports and all everything is there so likewise we have system route and you can think here right that is it any difference in between this and the cisco world no much difference right uh, if we have the communication within the subnet you have some switch across different different gateways you have router across different region one router Two router, three router, four router. You can run some OSPF or EIG, RP, etc. So one subnet can go to other subnet, other location, right? And if it is different geographical location, then you have some MPLS or internet, um, like you can create IPsec, etc., etc. Let's just stick with routing. So you have MPLS or any other type of arrangement. If you if you are doing communication over the broadband or the internet circuit, then you are creating site to site tunnel, maybe router and firewall and all, right? Same thing here also. So at the moment, what I have done, because I just don't want to make this uh, uh, video lengthy. So what you learn here, that what is system route, what is default system route, and then in upcoming video, I'll go and cover the custom routes as well. Custom route means that you, you want to change this particular arrangement that you want to go to internet or you want to go to the peer to peer without redirecting the traffic and all. So I will go and cover this custom route and dynamic route in the next recording. Let's just stop here for this particular section. Now you understand what is system route, default system route let's understand the custom route now we know at this point of time that when we have this default routing configured so at that particular time the vnets within vnet to vnet if you're creating vnet peering they will do the communication but that vnet they can go outside to the internet and they can do the communication even vnet to vnet peering you can do but you vnet to vnet peering also creating default route but you can't redirect the traffic towards the firewall and then it can do go to the uh, other vnet like default means that default system route means that your network is running on default behavior and then you want to redirect those traffic towards uh, the 
a secure gateway and then it will go to the destination that means you want to overwrite the rules that you have with the default routes so in that case this custom route will come into the picture so with help of custom route what we can do that we can overwrite all the rules that we can create with the default system routes right so in this case actually the work profile of network engineer will come into the picture right so that's why a company need network engineers for cloud networking as well right because they can't write, run everything over the default system route creation will be very easy i will go and check that now the other concept with the default uh, with the custom route we have is the secure tunneling so what does it mean by secure tunneling you can see in the diagram that default behavior is what directly is going to internet directly it is going to internet right but if you have this custom route you can redirect the traffic towards the vpn gateway and then the communication will happen so you can see with help of force tunnel side to side vpn we can override the system routes and then uh, the traffic pattern will be secured how to configure it configuration will be very easy and you can see there are three step process that uh, create the routing table add the user defined default route to the vpn gateway associate the routing table with the appropriate vnet subnet right these are the steps that we can follow and then we can create the secure tunnel is this the something that uh, new concept again this is something like in cisco world we are telling this as a service redirection or redirecting the traffic towards the secure gateways or firewall or appliances right same thing again the way we are doing is different but uh, overall the networking will never change it will be the same now the last topic for this particular section in this uh, recording is this that what is azure route server right azure route server so far what we have done so far we have study about about uh, default routes and i told you the analogy of uh, uh, vnet peering so if you have two vnets vnet a vnet b if you are creating the peering in between them that means that particular peering this particular peering is a static route uh, a static route right because i told you here to here and here to here you are creating some static route type of thing correct so uh, this we know now static route we know that they are not scalable and there are lot many issues lot many scalability issue we have with the static route so why not we can go and use some dynamic routing protocol and that's the same thing we have with the route server A route server they are one type of dedicated vm instance and you can see that dedicated vm instance is virtual appliance network virtual appliance or nva so they are dedicated vms that can go and in turn establish the dynamic routing protocol with the on prem infra right so with help of route server now it's just a router right so it's too complicated here in all the technology as your route server actually this is a vm server so that's why the router plus because this router is in a server so azure is telling this as a route server a server which is doing the router job and then that server can uh, uh, can there we can go and create some dynamic routings and that's why you can see that here in the notes it it can go and do the peering with the bgp and all so once we have we don't want to do all the routing configuration manually so once we have this route server then in that case we can go and define the dynamic routing protocols we can peer with the bgp we can tune tune the bgp attributes and now we can achieve to active passive and active at active design you know again the design will come into the picture because when you are creating high available services when you are creating uh 
scalable services at that time design will be very important so where you want to put active 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 standby where you want to put a static route where you want to put dynamic route where you are forcing the routes towards some secure gateway all these things will come into the picture right so i hope that you now you 100% und understood that what is system route, custom route, user-defined routes, there's a route server. And now you will feel confident because nothing is new behind the scene. All these things we have done even in the CCNA label in Cisco, right? Okay, so knowing all these facts, let's just stop here. All right, so we have reached to the last recording, our last video of section one. In this section, we have to go and understand that how Azure is doing NAT, Network Address Translation. Although we know that NAT Network Address Translation is one of the basic networking operation, all networking devices, we can go and do the NATing with, Network Address Translation. So what does it mean? It means that if we have functions, let me try to draw with respect to function, this function chart that we used to study in our mathematics. So function and if you have mapping, so what you can do with NAT that you can go and do the mapping maybe one to one or many to one like this, or you can go and do the mapping. Uh, okay all addresses can go and map to one address. It's like many to one, right? This is many to one. Earlier I have drawn many to many as well. Many addresses going to many other addresses. Now suppose if this is private address and this is public address, so that means in NAT, you can go and convert or map or translate the private addresses to the public addresses. In other technical term, many of the private addresses can be converted to less number of public addresses. Like that you can think because there is always problem with the public addresses. They are less and they are very expensive. So what we try to do that network flows we try to create all these networking within the, uh, within the private address range and then all these networking flows we are converting with few of the public addresses and then again the terms will come into the picture like uh, a static NAT, maybe dynamic NAT, port address translation and all and all. In Azure, what we are supporting or what Azure is supporting, so let's quickly go and check that. So in Azure, we can go and do this uh, translation and in the next diagram, I'll show you that how this translation is happening in the robust way. But um, here in this basic diagram, you can see that NAT translation, Azure NAT translation, private can go to the public or private, private can go to the pool of public addresses as well. How many flows it supported within the NAT? So let me show you the number because this flow number that you will see here actually this is there with all the NAT devices so all the NAT devices there you can go and configure up to 64,000 TCP UDP flow and generally these uh, NAT devices they are supporting 16 public IP actually this number is there for I think most of the networking devices this is the standard Anyways, no one wants to do these 64,000 flows as well because you never want to reach to the upper limit or to the highest uh, label uh, because these are, again, these are some sort of, uh, uh, we can say these are some sort of uh, practical number. They are not a theoretical number. They are not actually practically possible if the flows will reach up to this point, we should have threshold up to 75 to 80%. After that, the packet will start getting dropped.
right? So now let's see that in Azure, what type of natting is possible and supported. So uh, they will go and support load balancing, public IP addresses, public IP pool as well. So here in the diagram, you can see that various type of NAT flows supported within the VNet. So it's like that uh, Azure, they are supporting NAT, but there are limitations as well. And I will go and I will show you the limitation as well. At the moment, you can see that we have the NAT flow and within the NAT flow, we are going towards the load balancer. We are going about, uh, we are going towards the public IP from one of the subnet. Then from one of the subnet, we can go and go to the public IP from other subnet. You can see that we can go to public IP or pool of public IPs and all. Right, so this type of mix and match is supported, but there is a limitation as well. And what limitations we have here? So let's quickly see that limitation with NAT. First of all, they will not go and support IPv6. Then NAT will not, in Azure NAT, they will not support multiple VNAT, means they can't ex expand towards the multiple VNAT, they will not support the IP fragmentation and they are supporting only public SKU, public IP pool, load balancer and some basic resources. But if we want to mix and match with other services, they will not go and support. All right, so again, uh, because this is Azure associate networking, even if you compare with uh, CCNA networking, even the topics are very less small and even configuration is also even more simpler. Go search NAT, click, 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 NAT will get configured. So we, we should know the concept behind the scene. If you know the concept, then configuration part will be easy. And these concepts already we know from our networking knowledge. So overall, you can see that section one I completed within one hour, 30 minutes. And all those concepts related to section one, it's actually very easy. And uh, for network engineer, network associate engineers, even they can do it within maybe one or two days. All right, so let's just stop here. Hello everyone. I'm going to give you offer related to CCI lab. In this lab, what you will find, so let me quickly show you that. In this lab, you have multiples switches. You can see you have more than 16 switches, 20 routers. You have a Steven full-fledged lab. Actually, this is complete uh, CCI Enterprise uh, 1.0 lab where you can do section one, section two, section three. Maybe you know that in CCI exam, you have three different sections. Means already sections are defined, but generally these three sections that your students are practicing and in this three sections, you can perform everything, all the tasks you can perform in this particular Eve NG lab. You can see the version and the supported images. This is exact match that we have in the exam as well. So for example, for SD-WAN, you need to work on VAGs and the uh, vManage. Release is 18.4. That's the same release we have in the exam as well. So this will be your very much uh, similar lab setup that you have in your CCI exam for your practice purpose. Now, what you can't do in this lab, you can't do lab related to DNA because in this EVNG lab, we don't have Cisco DNAC integration and you can't do uh, ICE lab as well, because in this we don't have ICE integration as well. For that practice, you need full-fledged online rake from any good place you can go and have it. But apart from that, apart from 2.1, 2.2, actually, you can go and perform all the tasks. Even if you are not practicing for your CCI exam, for example, you are practicing for your CCNP and you want to check your OSPF knowledge, BGP knowledge, MPLS knowledge, uh, SD-WAN knowledge, all those tasks you can go and perform in this lab. With this lab, I'm providing the video guide how to do all those tasks. Even we have the lab guide as well. 
So you can simply follow those guides. You can simply go and complete all those tasks. Suppose if you are new to the technology, so I have multiple free videos in YouTube and Udemy that you can go and refer to upskill your knowledge to learn the technology. And then simply you can go and use this particular lab and you can break any CC and PCCI exam. Means you, you will pass it um, uh, easily. Now, what is the cost? And these are the sections that we have in the CCI exam. So what is the cost of this? Because I'm offering this for the students, so I put very little, small cost here. So you have to pay only 150 USD to get this particular software. And uh, how you can go and get it? You have to email me. So my email address, you can send me one email request let me write here ratnesh721 kumar721 at the rate gmail.com just email me and uh, send me the request and i will give you this particular nice software full-fledged software evng software or the file where you can go and practice your CCNA, CCNP, CCI, SD1, full fledged SD1 is there. So if you can go and watch my YouTube videos, in YouTube I have 22 hours SD1 uh, video recording file and so many SD1 videos I have uploaded in YouTube. Those YouTube videos also you need some lab setup, right, to practice. So even if you are not preparing for your CCNP or CCI, simply you want to learn uh, Cisco SD1. You can go watch my free videos in YouTube, use this particular lab setup and you can perform your st -band. You can become master in the st -band. Likewise, if you are preparing for CCNP, in CCNP, again, we know that we have N core and one elective. For that also, you can go and perform all the tasks related to routing and switching, OSP, BGP, everything in this lab. It's a full-fledged lab. So I will recommend you to send this email right away. Take this particular lab, practice, enhance your skill and become very good in the market. So you will get high paid salaries. All right. After that, you go and watch the technology video. Thanks for watching.